Hi, I'm Dave Warzel, and you're watching PHTV4. This is Spotlight. Today's Spotlight is on the speech team at Stagg High School. And with me today, we're fortunate enough to have uh, head coach Jeff Epperson on my left. Coach, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Good to see you again. Um, and then on my right, we have a couple team members. On my immediate right, I've got Courtney and Lorraine. And uh, we're going to get a chance to talk to them about the season, the events they compete in. Speech is kind of interesting in that it's got multiple events. Uh, compared to athletics, it's probably more like track or swimming where you have a variety. Um, we'll talk about that. First, I'm going to turn to Coach Epperson. And uh, you wear multiple hats in this district. <laughs> um, and, and, and I know you work at Sandbrook, too. Can you give us a little bit of your background as, uh, in the district and as a coach here? Sure. I started uh, at Sandberg in 2002 when they opened the Performing Arts Center there. I run the Performing Arts Center uh, there. And the year I was hired, I was also hired to assistant coach with the Sandberg speech team uh, and was assistant for 16 years. And then uh, an opening happened here, so uh, I decided to try head coaching over here. So it's been uh, it's been fun. Uh, you know, the Stag speech team was smaller than Sandberg, so we're trying to grow it uh, slowly and steadily. All right. Well, good luck and uh, congratulations on the move to Stag. That's exciting for you, I'm Thank sure. You um, all right. Now, how about? Uh, I, I said that you know the thing that's interesting about speech is you have multiple events. Okay, and and so. You can see you're on the speech team, but you actually have a specific competition. Courtney, can you tell us what event you do? Um, I do radio speaking, which is kind of, um, I specialize in doing five-minute broadcasts that aren't memorized, and it's spontaneous news given um, every 30 minutes, like I have to do some sort of broadcast where I prepare my own um, speech, and it has to be cut at specifically five minutes, and I put like a news anchory voice on. Yeah, and, and that includes everything, like news, advertisement, weather, sport, I mean, the whole run-through, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have to write my own transitions. I would write my own sign-on and sign-off. But really, everything within the packet of news given 30 minutes before my broadcast is all, like, something that I haven't written myself. And when you're, when you're judged or scored, the judge actually isn't watching you or in the room. Like, like you're doing it separate in a way. Isn't that correct? Or something like that? It's partially correct. Um, usually, like in a, you know, a perfect world, it would be in two separate rooms where I'm over a microphone. But usually because of like lack of technology and just you know, tournaments in general, I'll be sitting in a room like facing away from my judge. And my judge will be sitting at another part of the room um, timing me. But we don't make eye contact and we don't talk. Right. So it is about listening to how you present the news, the advertisement, and the timing of the event, right? Yeah, it's really more about what they're listening to, like my voice. They don't take account into what I'm wearing or what I look like or anything. So I could be wearing a clown suit, and I could still get first place. <laughs> I like the image. I like the idea anyway. Lorraine, how about you? What events do you do? Uh, I do two events. I do poetry reading and um, DDA, or dramatic duet acting. Can you, you want to tell us, tell us first about what is, I mean, we know what poetry is, but what does it look like in competition? Well, you, it's not exactly memorizing, but it's, you have a book, and you need to choose a piece of your own. Well, not your own, you need to choose a piece. And you have a book, and you essentially read it. With, well, you need to memorize it a little bit, but you read it, essentially. Right, I was going to say, and I've, I've seen that event before. I might have even judged it before. Uh, you, you almost have it memorized, but the point being so that you can actually kind of read it dramatically, where the inflection goes, or pace, or, or volume. You, you don't read it cold, I guess, is the point. No, like you give the right emotions into the reading and all that. You dramatic, uh, dramatize it. Right. Then what about DDA, which, how many, Coach, how many events are there in speech? There are 14 individual events. And so by individual events, separated out, so there are two duet events dramatic duet acting and humorous duet acting. Uh, but yeah, it's like, like you said earlier, it's, I always call it it's like track and field for performing arts because there are uh, limited prep, like Courtney's. Uh, there are acting, like that. Uh, there are also just public speaking. So oratorical declamation is memorizing someone else's speech and presenting it. And then there are writing events, like uh, original oratory, where you kind of come up with your own TED Talk uh, or informative which is, like the title says, you're giving someone information on a topic they may not have known about, uh, or original comedy. That's another writing one where you come up with your own eight-minute 
comic piece, right? Or at the, no, that's at one end of the spectrum. We can go to the far other end, and we've got impromptu then, right? Impromptu, that's right. Yeah, that's another limited prep where they get a question. They have two minutes to put down their thoughts kind of on a note card and organize it, and then they have to present a six-minute cohesive speech uh, based on that question or quote or whatever. And then there's also extemporaneous speaking, which is you get 30 minutes to prep a six-minute speech, but it's on a political uh, or world events, and you have to answer the question with uh, quotes from news articles you've read throughout the week. It's interesting. In that regard, I would say speech is, is uh, again, like track in the sense that there's almost something for everybody. You know, I mean, like if it's radio, if that's your thing, or poetry, or is that your thing? Do you want to, how about tell us, so you do DDA, dramatic, duet dramatic acting. Can you tell us what you're doing for that, and what does that look like in competition? Uh, I have a partner. Um so we memorize essentially a piece which we both choose and we act it out with all the blocking minimal but we have blocking for that and we just act it out right you're not using props i think you have chairs or a table and, and you don't have costumes something like that we have uh two chairs and a table available so we can use it however we like okay so again a, a really wide variety you know we're talking about and, that, and that's really pretty cool Coach, how about how is the season going so far? Because I know we're kind of winding down. We're into the last, headed into the last part of it. How's it been going so far? I mean, it's been going great. We've had uh, more active members this year than last year, so that's always a good thing. Uh, COVID really knocked us out in terms of numbers, so we've been building those back up. Last year, Courtney was our first person to go to state in over a decade, and she's been going gangbusters with radio. Uh, Laureen and Nora's DDA seems really strong. We just put it together over break. Um, so we are going to be going into regionals with, I believe, nine events. Uh, you could, I mean, once our team gets big enough, we'll have enough to have all 14 events, but, you know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a process. But everybody who's competing is competing well, uh, and I think they're hitting their stride uh, just at the right time. So they have three more invitationals this weekend and then two after that uh, before regionals on February 4th. All right, well, good luck. That's exciting, especially uh, with a state-level competitor uh -huh. back. Courtney, that's exciting. Good luck. So maybe this is a silly question at this point. How's the season going so far for you now? <laughs> um, for me, honestly, the start was pretty slow. Uh, I had to get on my A game, like, three, I think the third one. I was, like, kind of breaking. And then, honestly, since then, it's been, like, you know, I've been getting pretty solid numbers every weekend. Um, honestly, like, I'm, I hope I make it to state again. It's really not guaranteed. Right. And it's something that really happens, like, once in a lifetime. So I hope it's a double-time thing for me. Well, good luck. It is exciting. And having the experience, I'm sure, is going to help you. So good luck with that, Courtney. Uh, Lorraine, how about you? How's the season been going for you so far? Uh, I just, like, I began and uh, I joined speech in J August. So, so far, it's going pretty good. Pretty good. All right. And then are there, is there a specific competition you're looking forward to? You have a few invites, a state-level thing, Coach? I mean, the thing is, is, is each invitational is fun. It's usually thematic. Like when we go to Revis, it's uh, uh, the Burbank Cinematic Universe, so everything is Marvel-themed, so the kids have a blast with that. Uh, in Halloween, which is the, always the first rookie tournament, uh, novice tournament of the year, it's obviously Halloween-themed. Uh, we did a Shakespeare-themed one just before break. So they're, they're fun. Um, and then regionals, that's the, that's kind of the, where the metal meets, or the rubber meets the road, because it's, you're one and done. If you don't right. get through finals, you're done for the season. Right. So it's, that part of it is exciting. Right. The, competing at the state level to get downstate, mm -hmm. yeah. How about, are you looking forward to something specific, Courtney or Lorraine? Honestly, like, because it's my senior year, I would say all of the tournaments are equally exciting for me because it's, like, the last time, yeah. every single time I walk in, I'm like, well, this is the last time I'm going to be in this building. So, but more specifically, I'd probably say regionals or sectionals because those two is, like, when you have the most adrenaline and you feel like, you know, like, this is it. Yeah, the energy level is really buzzing then. And, and I agree, I get that, especially as a senior each one becomes that much more special. You're not going to go to Revis again. You're not going to get the Shakespeare one again, you know. So, well, good luck. I'm excited. Lorraine, how about you? Are you looking forward to anything coming up still? Not really specific, but I'm looking forward to all the tournaments. I like to attend all of them. I say, Coach, you got to like that answer, right? All of them. Bring them all on. No complaints. It, it, it takes a special breed to want to get up at 6 in the morning on Saturdays. They're entire, like, from October until February. And talk in classrooms all day so <laughs> I was gonna say no that is a but my daughters did speech and I remember they you know getting up they would have to get up at four to get 
dress cleaned up and then you know drive them over to the school that level of dedication is not typical of many high school students or comp or uh, types of activities so the funny thing is it's the the hardest thing is to get kids in and to try it because you'll they'll hear we gotta get up when yeah. on Saturday once they start doing it they get into it I it's I've, I've very rarely had someone who've gone to a couple of competitions like yeah no I'm good yeah. And it's, it's usually like, yeah, I want to go and be with all these other crazy people who practice their speeches to lockers and, you know, and they, the teams get to know one another and follow each other on various social media. And, and uh, you know, it's once they get in and try it, they, they, it's kind of uh, a life unto it itself. Um, it is dedication. These are two of our most dedicated uh, speech team members. Uh, but once you get into it, it's also there's just a level of fun. No, for sure. I saw that, too, that they have a great time when they're together. Mm -hmm. It's a good group to be with, yeah. you know, good group of students. And maybe, you know, and I think we talk about it, but the benefit of practicing public speaking skill, that's a life skill. Oh, my All God. Right. Yeah, I, that's, uh, I've told last, in the fall, when, as for recruitment, we went to all the advisories, and I talked to all of them, and, and what I, t I always say the same thing is that every job I've ever gotten, yeah. uh, every professional interaction, uh, you know, just any... Thing that requires your voice uh, you get a leg up in life by doing some sort of speaking event in high school if you do debate if you do speech team if you do student Congress model UN anything that requires you to speak in front of strangers which is the number one fear in the world right, right. ahead of the fear of death yeah. uh, you're really setting yourself up well for the future. Yeah, it's, it's a tremendous skill to carry into your career, whatever the next step is. We're going to turn away from speech team for a minute. How about, uh, according to your favorite subject in school? I think there's one answer, but maybe there's another. Go ahead. Um, I'd probably say English. Like, I, that's my favorite class that I look forward to every day and probably for the last 17 years of my life. So, I mean, other than that, honestly, I'd just say English. That is a great answer. I'm a former English teacher, so that's an awesome answer. So, Lorraine, you can say something different if you want, but the winning answer is, no, go ahead. What do you uh, my favorite subject is math, but my favorite class is chemistry. Okay. I like it. We got, we got a, a range here. Uh, do you do any other sports or activities, clubs, anything else at STAG? I am a one-trick pony, so I'm on the speech team, and this is all I've done for four years. But honestly, it's majorly because um, I want to pursue radio speaking after high school, and uh, that's like kind of like I'm just fixated on one thing, usually. I was going to say, speech is, is, to do others is kind of difficult because the season runs long through a huge chunk of the year. I mean, as I'm fond of saying, we're, we do share custody with other clubs. Right. Uh, right. So the, the only club that we have that, that is the hardest challenge and yet we've done it is debate runs con concurrently the exact same weekends as speech so what we'll do is sometimes trade off mm -hmm. but I mean I've found ways to work around for most other kids but it is a commitment for Saturdays like yeah. if you have we have one girl who's on a, a girls uh, hockey team so she's had to miss a couple of tournaments for us because of tournaments for that yeah. so you know you have to make concessions just because it's 2023 20, and right kids are in 20 different things yeah. so uh but yeah i the saturdays are a commitment but we usually find a way to work around other scheduling conflicts the only time it gets tricky is regional and sectional those are like the mandatory if you want if you want to compete this year for the goal of being unregional but you can't make regional or sectional yeah. that makes things a little tough yeah it, it, it is and it is a commitment thing if you're going to be good at it if you're going to succeed at it how about you Lorraine? do you do any other clubs or sports activities uh yeah i do uh theater here so I'm in drama club. I've been in a couple plays. It's been fun. I like theater. All right. Good luck. There's another, I mean, that's a public performance thing. Um, last question for both of you. Lorraine, I'm going to let you take a pass. You have a couple years to figure out an answer to this one. Uh, Courtney, do you want to, or I'll tell you, how about you, Coach? Do you have a favorite public speaker? So just historically, um, I will never forget seeing uh, Obama's speech to the Democratic National Convention in I think it was 02 or maybe 04 um, but I remember watching it and thinking he's going to be president just his, his 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 speaking style is electric so I have a great amount of respect for him as an orator yeah when somebody is a good public speaker they have that quality they can electrify an audience um, 
How about you, Courtney? Do you have a favorite public speaker? Um, I don't think my answer is going to be up to par with Mr. Epperson, <laughs> but my favorite public speaker, I would say, um, would be Robin Williams on Good Morning Vietnam. I love that movie, and I will literally watch it every single day. And he is like an inspiration for me, and like his spontaneity and his character. Yeah, he's got a great voice and a great delivery. I, I'll, I can give you that one. That's okay. Very different. We're again, we're yeah. at different ends here. Um, how about this fantasy question for you, Courtney, Coach? Um, you're called. They need a public speaker. Big occasion, special event. Um, if you got that call. What would it be? Where would it be? Like, yeah, I want to do that speech at that place. Well, so the fantasy answer is um, like an award ceremony. Like somehow I've gotten an award for something. God knows what. But it gets me the opportunity to thank everybody who has gotten me to that point in life. Like the, the adults who helped me as a kid get into the theater, uh, the other speech coach peers I've had over the years, that type of thing. That opportunity would be awesome. Uh, but my actual secret fantasy is I run. A, I really have committed myself to try to do a five-minute uh, open mic set for a wow. stand-up sometime in the near future. All right. Good luck. That's Thank exciting. You. So that one's actually within range. The other one You're is sure. Right. Okay. <laughs> I like the award one. A chance to say thank you yeah. in a big public forum. Courtney, how about you? We needed to do a performance thing, but it's the one you want to do anyway. A public speaking event. What would you do? Um, again, with a generic answer, it would definitely be radio speaking. Um, because I want to pursue journalism, I have, like my end goal would be being a news anchor. So that would kind of like align with your question. I'd be doing that every day. So some radio station, you get a call at like 6 a.m. So and so sick. We need you to step in. Can you cover the news? You would, that would be the deal. You'd want that one. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I've had a couple opportunities, but I have passed them down because of how focused I am with the team right now and, like, the end of my senior year. But if that happened to me, like, post-graduation, yeah, I would definitely right. pick that up. All right, cool. Good luck. That's exciting. All right. Um, how about well, last question for you? Do you have, as a senior, post-high school plans yet? Do you know where you're going, what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm fully committed to ISU. Um, I just need to go to my orientation. I have, like, the down payment. I have everything. Um, I'm going to be a journalism major, and hopefully I can, like, kind of, like, wiggle my way into, like, um, broadcast journalism. But, yeah, I mean, that's honestly my goal is just to become a news anchor. All right, good luck. Yeah. Lorraine, good luck with the rest of the season here. Courtney, you too. I hope uh, that state thing is, uh, you know, happens for you. Coach, good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The, uh, the chat and chargers have uh, three more invitationals and hopefully we're going to make it back to state. All right. Good luck. That's exciting. Thank you all for being here. I'm Dave Wurzel and you've been watching Spotlight. Today's Spotlight has been on the speech team at Stag High School. Thank you for watching.